Hi all, it's your host Cryptic and welcome back to the channel. Sorry I've been away for a month, uh, life's hectic and busy and so is work, so yeah, it's been a while since I could really take the time to edit and make a video. But today I have a real quick and good one for you, um, and a bit of an update on the channel as well. Um, as you can see from the title of the video, uh, we're talking about VRR, Variable Refresh Rate, um, why it's important and how to enable it onto your Sony Bravia XR line of TVs. Uh, reason specifically for the XR, but you can also apply this to other brands, LG, etc., Samsung, um, if VRR is available on your TV, but specifically for the XR range on the Sony Bravia TVs because the update recently dropped in the last two weeks. I've had time to fiddle with it a bit and see what it does and doesn't work with and I sort of want to present that to you in a quick and compact video here today. Um, also, thank you to everyone who subscribed over the last month. We've, uh, as the recording of this video, um, we've hit the 230 sub mark. Um, it wasn't that long ago, I think just a month before that, we cracked 100 sub marks. So thank you so much to everyone who subscribed, um, everyone that's commenting, giving feedback and sort of helping each other in the comments and in, in the community. It's greatly appreciated and really uh, humbling to see everyone sort of working together to help everyone uh, achieve whatever they're trying to achieve with their tech and gaming stuff. So without further ado, uh, let's get straight into it. So here you can see I've, I've got a recording of my uh, XJ90, the 65 inch model specifically. Um, it recently got the XR update. And what you'll see, what you want to do here is get into your home menu, which will get you to the um, Google menu here. And you sort of want to um, press the arrow to the right on your remote to your profile picture and then hover over the settings button. Now the main key here is that you want to enter into the settings here through this this specific settings menu not the quick settings or any other but this one here this is the one that's going to allow you to actually get in and change uh, the format that your HDMI inputs uh, work on depending on what device you have plugged in so home button to the right profile settings you want to go channel and inputs Okay, um, it might be different if you're doing an LG or a Samsung, but channel inputs, scroll down to uh, external inputs. To the right, you wanna go to HDMI signal format. And as you can see, we've got four HDMI options. Our main HDMIs are HDMI 2, sorry, HDMI 3 and HDMI 4. They're the full 2.1, full bandwidth 2.1s that allow for VRR, HDR, 120 FPS um, if the device is compatible. Um, I've got VRR enabled on HDMI 3. Main reason is, yes, that is what the PlayStation 5 is connected to. No, the PS5 currently does not support VRR. I'll get to that later in the video. It's a bit of a rant there. Um, but I also interchange that with my PC, which has an RTX card. So that enables G-Sync. G-Sync now with the variations and updates to it allows VRR natively on TV. Um, if you have an AMD card or equivalent, um, FreeSync also works with VRR, um, which is fantastic. And basically what you want to do is select your HDMI input, scroll down until it says enhanced format VRR. What I have noticed is with the VRR on the Sony XR90, um, or the X90J here specifically, um, is that it's not only allowing VRR, but it does allow local dimming for um, HDR, um, which is fantastic. Uh, before it was theorized that it was only enabled on the OLED panels, but knowing the X90J is an LED panel, um, it enables it as well. Whether that will be enabled across all types of devices, I'm not sure. Currently on PC, I can do it. Console, not sure until the PS5 gets the update, but it does work like that. Now, the big issue now with the PS5, they still do not and have not updated the PS5 to support VRR. Um, I don't know why. They finally done it on their last two gen of TVs, uh, applying the update to the mid tier and high end uh, tiers of those TVs, all the way up to now. Um, the next generation of Sony TVs are coming with VR out of the box, so you're not pending an update anymore. So it seems like Sony has worked out how to implement VR on their TVs. Um, don't know why they can't just enable it on the PS5. Uh, the next big update that's coming for the PS5 that's currently in beta, um, has no word on whether VRR um, is going to happen. 
Now you'd wonder why is VR so important? Um, recently we've had a whole bunch of games come out, uh, a very high profile game, Elden Ring by From Software or From Soft. Um, their games are notoriously known to drop frames. Um, they have a lot going on, massive enemies, um, a lot of particle effects. Their engine, unfortunately, isn't the best optimized engine in the world. Um, it is sort of outdated in the sense that they've been running the same base base of the engine for a while and just adding updates to it and feature feature stuff to it but they haven't really done a full overhaul like sort of unreal engine 4 went to unreal engine 5 etc etc right um and because of that and their games being multi-platform you'll notice that there's a fair bit of frame dip um it's not running at a solid 60 um depending on what console you're playing on you may not even be getting a solid 30 especially if you're playing on base consoles like the base xbox one and the base ps4 um, which is a real shame because their games are phenomenal. Um, like it or hate it, they make amazing games. They are quite difficult, so you either love them or you hate them. But in respect to their genre of games, they're fantastic, but they are let down by performance. Now, VRR, what it does essentially is, and you'll notice this also with a bit of the early gameplay that I have here recorded of Horizon Ver uh, uh, Forbidden West. Sorry, I uh, wanted to say Zero Dawn, but that was the the predecessor to the current one. Um, early days, it did drop a couple frames here and there. Um, and VRR essentially allows anything between 40, minimum of 40 frames, give or take. Um, it all depends on the algorithm of the VRR implementation that you have, but generally it's around 40 frames and above. If it's fluctuating down to 40 frames and fluctuating all the way up to 60 and beyond, um, normally you get a lot of screen tearing, jagginess, blurriness, uh, hiccups, judders, um, and it's not a very smooth motion to watch and play. With VRR enabled, what it does is it gets the frame rate or the refresh rate of the monitor to uh, properly sync with what's being output by the game. And then it tries to lock it into a perfect 60 if that's what the target frame rate that you've aimed for. And it sort of keeps it there for you. It does all the work to keep it a butter smooth, an absolute butter smooth um, animation and frame rate. Um, with a lot of multi-platform games, they do suffer from uh, having to be all the way on base PS4 and base Xbox One and all the way to the current gen uh, series consoles and the PS5 um, and PC, of course, that is a lot of hardware to optimize for. Despite of how much money you pump into studios, how many people you have working on it, as you know, a lot of games don't come together till essentially the final few hours, the final few days of it being developed. Um, and then it really looks like a game and it's really coming together and then all the main bugs are appearing and then you're starting to work on uh, eliminating all those bugs. The big thing is that there are performance issues because you're trying to optimize for so much varying hardware and issues. A lot of those issues don't arise till you get a million people buying the game and trying it and realizing that with their TV, their PC configuration, their console, they're coming up with issues that they may not have come up with and had issues with in regards to their sort of closed environment uh, quality tested with like a hundred people or a thousand people before the launch of the game. So VRR is hugely important. Now, a lot of first party titles, even with like Horizon Forbidden West, it wasn't that bad. It did drop a few things here. There were other more notable bugs in the game, but even with first party titles coming out, whether it be Halo, Horizon, Gran Turismo now, um, anything else really thoughts are the whole lot they will have issues like this relating to frame rate um, and it is just weird that sony doesn't want to implement it yet on the ps5 when clearly they know how to do it they do have it on their tvs the theory is that sony is waiting so their tvs are ready to go and they're perfect for ps5 and perfect for playstation um, branding and symbolism that they've got going on and they just want their tvs and that console together that's what they want everyone to buy and to know that vr works perfect and all the features work perfect with hdr and everything else that's ridiculous not in that that's if that rumor is true i mean i'm most likely it's not a rumor it probably is 100 true but on, on part of sony what they're doing is ridiculous um lg tvs the c1 and the upcoming c2 enable VRR, Samsung TVs have VRR, other brand TVs have VRR, let's just get it going, like come on, just enable it on the bloody console, let people buy the TV that they prefer, just because they prefer your console may not necessarily be that they prefer your TVs, right? It's a budget thing, it's a feature set thing, etc, etc. Um, personally for me, I don't 
care. Um, I'll go with any brand TV as long as it has the feature set and the price range that I'm happy with. Um, at the last time I bought a TV, the X90J was that TV. Next time it could be an LG or a Samsung or something else. It, I'm not brand loyal when it comes to TVs. I'm in there for the quality and the feature set. But let's get VRR enabled um, on the PS5. Xbox Series consoles had it since day, day one on launch. Sony, get, get your game up and stop lagging behind. Just get it done. Honestly, just get it done. Um, but yeah, guys, that's how to enable VRR on your Sony XR Series TVs with the recent uh, update that went over the air. Um, similar process can be applied to Samsung and LG TVs and other brands. They'll all be about the format for your HDMIs and it's usually an extended format naming or enhanced format. It's along those lines of the naming conventions and that usually allows you to enable your HDR, your 120 frames per second, your VRR, etc. If this video has been helpful for you, please hit the thumbs up button. Click subscribe and the notification bell, share the video, and of course, leave a comment below on your thoughts. And do you are you guys annoyed with the fact that the PS5 doesn't have VR yet, considering that we're well over a year uh, after launch and it still hasn't happened? Um, are there any, any other features on the PS5 or any other sort of, uh, I guess, console that you're waiting for, that you've been waiting for forever to happen? Um, also, a little update, I will be making another PS Vita video. Um, Next week, it will be in regards to uh, how to get various apps installed on the Vita, like YouTube, Netflix, etc. I'll be doing some testing and letting you know the limitations and the issues you might come across using them on the Vita, but also on how to install them. It's quite easy. Um, if you've done any modding before, any other app installation, it's pretty much the same, but there are some setting tweaks that you'll need to do. But that will be next week's video, guys. Again, thank you so much for everyone who's subscribed lately, and I will catch you all on the next one. See ya.